in the Belknap Academic Building at the University of Louisville. And today we're going to do an experiment to measure the charge to mass ratio of the electron. On the left side of this uh, video, you see uh, the apparatus where the work is actually done. There's a pair of Helmholtz coils that provide a magnetic field. And the field surrounds or passes through um, a globe that contains an electron gun. Inside that, uh, inside that globe, there's a gas that the electrons pass through uh, as they run into the gas atoms and collide with them. They can excite the gas atoms to glow, so you'll see the path of the electrons as a glow inside that tube when we turn the lights off. The electrons are generated inside an electron gun that's at the bottom inside that tube. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment. The gun itself has a filament, which is just heated to uh, produce thermal electrons out of the metal, and then those electrons are drawn out and accelerated by a voltage, uh, which provides the energy that uh, they then have as they go through uh, the gas in that tube. The voltage that, uh, that uh, accelerates the electrons is the 100 volts that you see displayed on the upper right of the power supply on your right. Below that, the current of 3 amps is the current that is delivered to the Helmholtz coils, and that determines the magnetic field. The other display you see there, the 4 volts, is a steering voltage that controls somewhat the direction of the beam inside the tube, and we won't need to change that at all. So the two values that we need to follow are the voltage, 100 volts in this case, that accelerates the electrons, and the current, 3 amps, that controls the, uh, the strength of the magnetic field. We can vary those. In this case, there are some knobs on those power supplies. I'll turn to change those values. In the ideal experiment, you'd be able to turn those yourself remotely, but I'll have to do that for you. So I'm going to just turn the lights off so you can see the electron beam, and then we'll take a closer look at, at it uh, from another angle. So now the glowing beam is pretty clear inside uh, the, uh, the, the tube. And you can also see uh, and probably still read the voltages which are on the display uh, on the right. So I'm going to walk over there and then change those voltages. You'll see now 100 volts. What happens if I increase the energy in the electron beam to 150? You should be able to see that it's getting bigger. We'll, we'll take a closer look at that so you can actually measure it in a moment. So that's actually 152 volts. And the circle that the beam follows is now a larger circle than it was at 100 volts. And I can increase it some more. That's the maximum it'll go, so I'm going to back it down here to 175. And there's the path at 175 volts. As I go in the other direction and reduce it, go back down to the 100 volts we had before. And you see that small path, and then we can go down somewhat. Before, the electrons don't have enough energy, really, to excite the gas. It's fading. We're now at 75 volts, and we can still see it there, but it's a much smaller circle. So go back up to 100 again. Now I'll change the current in the coil. So this is 3 amps in the coil. I'll reduce the current. So now the magnetic field is dropping. And that's uh, 2 and a half amps. And I'll reduce it even more. And now we're at 2 amps, and you can see the full size of the circle, 2 amps and 100 volts. Uh, the path of the electrons is quite a large circle inside that globe.
So next we'll take a closer look at the Helmholtz coils and then take some very um, precisely defined voltages and currents and let you measure the uh, path inside the tube. So now you can see inside the, uh, the tube very clearly the electron got at the bottom. I'm going to point it out here. It's, it's right down there. This globe is uh, evacuated and then filled with gas. Uh, and the Helmholtz coils, as you can see from the label, are a pair of coils with 130 turns, and they're designed to handle up to 3.5 amps of current. So I haven't changed anything from the video that we just saw. We're accelerating electrons at 100 volts, and we're applying 2 amps to those Helmholtz coils. Uh, you can't see the gas glow right now because of the room lights, so I'll turn the room lights out. And now you can see the path of the electrons in the gas. So we'll take a closer look at that uh, so that you can actually measure the size of that path and the scale at the same time. Now again with 100 volts on the electron beam and 2 amps in the Helmholtz coils, we're looking into the glass tube. And I'll turn the room lights off so that you can see the beam and you will probably still be able to see the scale uh, with the light that the beam produces. You can't see it right now because the lights are on. I've arranged the camera so that we're looking at an angle through the tube so that that scale in the back will run almost exactly across the diameter of the beam. So this is an ideal one to use for the actual measurement that we'll need for the lab. So all the perspective is right. So what you'll want to do then is just to measure how big this beam is in diameter. Uh, we'll also provide you with a still photograph you can work with. So let me turn the lights off. Now you can see the beam very clearly. So in a moment I'll change the voltages, but let me pause and get a nice still image of this that you could work with without the video. So now we're going to change the voltage on the electron beam while keeping the current in the coil at 2 amps. The voltage in the beam is currently 100 volts. So the first thing I'll do is just try to reduce it a little bit. So as I reduce the voltage, you'll see the path of the electrons becomes smaller in diameter. So now we're down to 75 at that point. And then I'll increase the voltage. This is back at 100, where we were before. And now I'll go up to 125. The higher voltage gives the electrons more energy, and the circle that they follow is a larger diameter circle. At 125 volts on the electron beam, I'll increase the current in the coil from 2 amps to 3. So this is going up to 3 amps. That's 125 volts at 3 amps. If I go to higher voltage, then the path will become larger. So it's 125. And here's 150. 150 and 3 amps. And we'll pause and take a photograph of that too. So you'll have a couple of cases you can measure uh, using the scale and a still photograph. 